I'm Abdul Kalam. You know me, right? <laughs> I've been forever with you to tell things that would inspire you. For the generations to come or the future of India, are we in a position to say, yes, we knew one of the greatest legends ever born in India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Considering the present scenario, if you have to tell that how does one dream and live one's life like a dream, his life serves as a greatest source of inspiration. So if we have to talk about life, inspiration, dreams, aspirations, determination and success which is known to the world but what was the actual struggle behind the making of the super human being which will actually serve as an inspiration for centuries to come. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam made us realize that you have to dream before your dreams can actually come true and the kind of dreams that you see will make you the person that you want to be. All birds find shelter during a rain but the eagle avoids rain by flying above the clouds. These inspiring words were uttered by one of the greatest visionaries of India, a former president, His Excellency Dr. Avul Pakir Jainul Abdeen, also known as APJ Abdul Kalam. He was the 11th president of India from the period 2002 to 2007. One of the greatest scientists ever born in India, Kalam was born and raised in Rameshwaram, Tamil Nadu. He studied physics and aerospace engineering and for a period of more than 40 years, he worked as a scientist and science administrator, primarily at the Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO, and Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. And he was the key man involved in India's civilian space program and military missile program. Thus, he was known as the Missile Man of India for his unparalleled efforts and work undertaken for the development of ballistic missile and launch vehicle technology. The greatness of this simple yet legendary personality is beyond words and from childhood itself he was grounded till his last breath but he had dreams in his eyes which he fulfilled for his motherland. He was a man with a mission and great vision who earned and played a pivotal role in terms of an organization, technical and political role in India's Pokhran II nuclear tests in 1998 which was actually the first since the original nuclear test by India in 1974. He was known as the Missile Man and also as People's President who redefined the President rule of India with his simple living and high thinking. He always connected to the youth of India even through the internet and they considered him as their inspiration. There were two incidents in Kalam's life which changed his life forever and a country is privileged to have such a towering personality who is a true son of the soil. When Kalam was a 10 year old boy, he had a great teacher who catalyzed his thought process and goal in life. There was an incident when Kalam was in the 5th standard and was a 10 year old boy and he had a great teacher. C.S. Subramanian Iyer. Subramanian was a science teacher and he was actually teaching the students how birds could fly. Kalam was really fascinated as to how birds could actually fly in the sky and his dreams were also like the birds in the sky. In order to demonstrate, he took the students including Kalam to the seashore at Rameshwaram and he practically demonstrated with thorough explanation as to why birds flap their wings and how they change their direction. Thus this formed the foundation for his vision in life and it's only possible 
for a great teacher like C.S. Subramanian whom Kalam always referred to. However, in real life Kalam did not even have enough money to buy a kite. Born in a family of seven brothers and sisters, they were even having difficulties of one proper square meal a day. The young Kalam was very fond of rotis, but in the area, rice was cultivated on a large scale. His mother used to arrange two rotis every day somehow. One day, his mother served her share of rotis to Kalam, and when Kalam came to know about this from his brother, he became very emotional and he didn't like this fact that he actually ate before his mother. He made up his mind to do something for his family. By the time he was 10 or 11 years old, he took up the responsibility of earning for his family. His father, Jainul Abdeen, was a boat navik in Hindi and he used to give on rent a boat for pilgrims who used to come to Rameshwaram for pilgrimage. However, in a storm that boat got destroyed and then there was no source of income. Then Kalam started selling newspapers in a cycle and he would end up reading the entire newspaper before he actually delivered them to the houses. He was so much interested in studies that he used to get up early in the morning at 4 a.m. and go for maths classes at 5 a.m. as the teacher used to teach only five students free of cost who would get up at 4 a.m. and take bath and come. After returning from his free tuition classes, he used to travel three kilometers to Dhanushkori railway station and sell the newspapers all over. Then he used to get ready to go to school and on the way back he used to collect the money for the newspapers. Then when he came back home, his mother used to keep his evening snacks ready and he never allowed fatigue to come in the way of his dreams. Seeing his interest in studies, his mother bought a lamp for him and used to study till 11 p.m. The flight of the birds was always in his eyes and he wanted to join the Indian Air Force and become a pilot. However, this couldn't happen as there were eight people to be selected and unluckily he was the ninth. However, he made his determination his pillar of success and his dreams. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam used to say, the dreams are not what we see in our sleep but dreams are those that don't let us sleep. He did not sleep for three nights to complete his thesis from Madras Institute of Technology so that he would get scholarship. He got his degree and progressed in the field of space science. He attained the zenith in terms of science and his flight to success is beyond compare. Starting from India's first space launch vehicle to nuclear test and the missile which travels 5,000 kilometers. The Agni missile are just amongst some of his achievements. However, to achieve all these landmarks in just one lifetime made him beyond extraordinary. The year was 1960 when he came to Delhi after graduating from Madras Institute of Technology in 1960. Kalam joined the Aeronautical Development Establishment of the Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO as a scientist. He started his career by designing a small hovercraft but remained unconvinced by his choice of this kind of a job at DRDO. Kalam was also part of the INCO SPAR that's INCOSPAR committee working under Vikram Sarabhai who was the renowned space scientist. In 1969, Kalam was transferred to the Indian Space Research Organization that's ISRO where he was the project director of India's first satellite launch vehicle SLV-3 
which successfully deployed the Rohini satellite in the near Earth orbit in July 1980. Kalam had first started the work on an expandable rocket project independently at DRDO in 1965. In 1969, Kalam received the government's approval and expanded this program to include more engineers under this umbrella. In between the year 1963 to 1964, he visited NASA's Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia, Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, and Wallops Flight Facility. Between the 1970s and the 1990s, that's around 20 years, Kalam made an effort to actually develop the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, which is better known as PSLV and SLV-3 projects, both of which were successful. Kalam was even invited by Raja Ramanna to witness the country's first nuclear test, Smiling Buddha as the representative of TBRL, even though he had not participated in its development. In the 1970s, Kalam also directed two other projects, which is the Project Devil and the Project Valiant, which sought to develop ballistic missiles from the technology of the successful SLV program. Though there was disapproval from the Union Cabinet, the Prime Minister then, Indira Gandhi, allotted secret funds to make these aerospace projects through her discretionary powers under Kalam's directorship. Kalam even played an important role convincing the Union Cabinet of India to conceal the true nature of these classified aerospace project. His research and educational leadership actually brought him laurels and prestige in the 1980s, which prompted the government to initiate an advanced missile program under his directionship. Kalam and Dr. V.S. Arunachalam, metallurgist and scientific advisor to the defense minister, even worked on suggestion by the then defense minister R. Venkatraman on a proposal for simultaneous development of a quiver of missile instead of taking planned missiles one after another. R. Venkatraman was instrumental in getting the cabinet approval for allocating rupees 388 crores then for the mission named Integrated Guided Missile Development Program, better known as IGMDP and appointed Kalam as the chief executive. Kalam played a major part in developing many missiles under the mission including the Agni, an intermediate range ballistic missile and Prithvi, the tactical surface to surface missile. Although the projects have been criticized for mismanagement and the cost of time and money overruns. Kalam even served as the chief scientific advisor to the Prime Minister and the Secretary of the Defence Research and Development Organisation from July 1992 to December 1999. The Pokhran II nuclear tests were conducted during this period in which he played an intensive political and technological role. Kalam even served as the chief project coordinator along with Raj Gopala Chidambaram during the testing phase. The media coverage of Kalam during this period made him the country's best known nuclear scientist. However, the director of the site test K. Santhanam said that the thermonuclear bomb had been a fizzle and actually criticized Kalam for issuing an incorrect report. Both Kalam and Chidambaram dismissed these claims. So in 1998, along with the cardiologist Soma Raju, Kalam developed a low-cost coronary stent named the Kalam Raju stent. In 2012, this duo actually designed a rugged tablet computer for healthcare in rural areas, which was named as Kalam Raju tablet. Now talking about the presidency period 
ऑफ डॉक्टर एपीजे अब्दुल कलाम कलाम सर्व एज द इलेवेंथ प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया सक्सीडिंग के आर नारायणन ही एक्चुअली वन द 2002 प्रेसिडेंशियल इलेक्शन विद एन इलेक्ट्रेट वोट ऑफ नाइन लैख ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड एटी फोर सर पासिंग द वन लैख सेवन थाउजेंड थ्री हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी सिक्स वोट वन बाय to 25th july 2007 on 10th june 2002 the national democratic alliance that's the nda which was in power at the time expressed that they would nominate kalam for the post of president and both the samajwadi party and the nationalist congress party backed his candidacy after the samajwadi party announced its support for kalam Narayanan chose not to seek a second term in office leaving the field clear for this legend Kalam actually said in the announcement of his candidature I am really overwhelmed everywhere both in internet and in other media I have been asked for a message I was thinking what message can I give to the people of the country at this juncture On 18 June Kalam filed his nomination papers in the Indian Parliament accompanied by Vajpayee and his senior cabinet colleagues The polling for the presidential election began on 15 July 2002 in the parliament and the state assemblies with the media claiming that the election was a one-sided affair and Kalam's victory was actually a foregone conclusion The count was held on 18 July. Kalam became the 11th president of the Republic of India in a easy victory which is counted as one of the greatest. And thus he moved into the Rashtrapati Bhavan after he was sworn in on 25 July. Thus Kalam was the third president of India to have been honored with the Bharat Ratna which is India's highest civilian honor. before becoming the president dr sarvapalli radhakrishnan in 1954 and dr zakir hussain in 1963 were actually the earlier recipients of the bharat ratna who later became the president of india he was also the first scientist and the first bachelor to actually occupy rashtrapati bhavan when he served as a president he was known by the people affectionately as the people's president saying that the signing of the office of prophet bill was the toughest decision he had actually taken during his tenure kalam was actually criticized for his inaction in deciding the fate of 20 out of the 21 mercy petitions submitted to him during his tenure the article 72 of the constitution of india empowers the president of india to grant pardons and suspend or commute the death sentence of convicts on the death row in september 2003 in pgi chandigarh kalam supported the need of uniform civil code in india keeping the view of the population of the country at the end of his term on 20th june 2007 kalam expressed his willingness to consider a second term in office provided there was certainty that he would be victorious in the 2007 presidential election however after two days he suddenly decided not to contest the presidential election again stating that he wanted to avoid involving rashtrapati bhavan from any political processes he did not have the support of the left parties the shiv sena and the upa constituents to receive a renewed mandate thus when he was nearing the expiry of the term of the 12th president pratibha patel on 24 july 2012 media reports in april claimed that kalam was likely to be nominated for his second term After these reports came in social networking sites witnessed a number of people supporting his candidature the bjp potentially backed his nomination saying that the party would lend their support if the 
Trinamool Congress, Samajwadi Party and the Indian National Congress proposed him for the 2012 presidential election. In June 2012, Kalam actually declined to contest the 2012 presidential poll. He said about his decision to not do so. Many citizens have also expressed the same wish. It only reflects the love and affection for me and the aspiration of the people. I'm really overwhelmed by the support. This being their wish, I respect it. I want to thank them for the trust they have in me. Now, after his presidential tenure, he left the office and became a visiting professor at the Indian Institute of Management, Shillong, the Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, and the Indian Institute of Management, Indore, an honorary fellow of the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, Chancellor of the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, Thiruvananthapuram, Professor of the Aerospace Engineering at Anna University, and an adjunct at many other academic and research institutions across India. He taught information technology at the International Institute of Information Technology, Hyderabad and technology at the Banaras Hindu University and Anna University. In the month of May 2012, Kalam even launched a program for the youth of India which he called What Can I Give Movement with the central theme of defeating corruption which was prevalent at large. In 2011, Kalam was criticized by civil groups over his stand on the Kudankulam nuclear power plant. He supported the establishment of the nuclear power plant and was accused of not speaking with the local people about this. Now coming towards the end of this legend, on 27 July 2015, Kalam travelled to Shillong to deliver a lecture on creating a livable planet Earth at the Indian Institute of Management Shillong. While he was actually climbing the flight of stairs, he experienced some discomfort but was able to enter the auditorium after resting for some time. Then around 6.35 pm Indian Standard Time, only 5 minutes had passed that he was actually delivering his lecture, he suddenly collapsed. The entire nation stood standstill as he was rushed to the nearby Bethany Hospital in a very critical condition and upon arrival he lacked a pulse or any other signs of life. Though he was in the intensive care unit, Kalam was confirmed dead due to sudden cardiac arrest at around 7.45 pm Indian Standard Time. After his unfortunate death, Kalam's body was airlifted in an Indian Air Force helicopter from Shillong to Guwahati from where it was flown to New Delhi on the morning of 28 July in an Air Force C-130J Hercules. On the morning of 29 July, Kalam's body wrapped in the Indian flag was taken to the Palam Air Base and flown to Madurai in an Air Force C-130J aircraft arriving at the Madurai airport. India actually was in deep grief and they didn't know how to react to the death of this legend who was Dr. APJ Abdul Kala. He was no longer with us but his memories will be instilled in our minds and etched in our hearts forever. This is a biography of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam by SK Day for Nargis News.